everyone, my name is Clancis and welcome to the Iron Bars, my true crime YouTube channel. So in today's case, we are going to take a break from South Africa and we are going to go to a southern country of Zambia. So the reason why I am doing a Zambian case is because some of my Zambian viewers and subscribers have asked me to do a Zambian case. So I started going into the rabbit hole and I started searching for a case that I was going to do for today's case. And of course, I started reading and reading and reading and then I came across this very interesting case which I am going to be covering in today's video. So this is the case of the Maloney brothers. So I want to say thank you to all my Zambian viewers who have suggested that I do a Zambian true crime. Very interesting cases you guys have up there. But this one definitely takes the cup. So the Maloney brothers were three of eight children to Chipikulu and Janet Maloney. As you guys would know, I like to know when is the date of birth of my perpetrators as well as the zodiac signs. So as I was busy trying to check information about this case, unfortunately there is very limited information i tried digging as far as i could of course there is a book as well about this very case but i thought buying it and waiting for days for it to be delivered read it through and then compile a video was going to take way too long so i tried seriously i looked for documentaries only thing that i found about this case is a movie about this true crime okay, so i tried to go with what made sense to me so i do invite the zambian viewers to correct me where i have gone wrong or where there was some misinformation or an omission i will highly appreciate that in the comment section so like i said there is little information about the Maloney brothers on the internet i couldn't even find a picture of any of the three brothers, let alone their mother or anybody that is related to the Maloney brothers. And unfortunately, the only picture that I have of them is when they are lifeless. And unfortunately, such a picture will get my YouTube channel deleted by YouTube if I had to insert it in this video. So we are going to keep that out of my YouTube video. So the story goes as such. So there was the Maloney family who just popped up in a village called Luano in central province of Zambia. Now the people in the village had no idea who this family was. They did not even bother to introduce themselves in the African culture. I think it's all over Africa. If you are going to relocate to a different township or village or town that is quite small and everybody knows everybody it is incumbent upon you to go and introduce yourself in some villages you even come with either a chicken or a cow or a goat or a sheep or something to show that you are here in good faith and you want to contribute positively to the community that you are going to be settling in. Unfortunately, the Maloneys did not even bother to introduce themselves. However, there was a rumor that the family had fled from Mozambique to Zambia. If you think about it, in the early 80s or so, there was some unsettlement in Mozambique, so it's possible that they have fled to Zambia from such wars in Mozambique. But anyways, the villagers did not say anything, and so indeed, the Maloneys just settled in the Luano Valley, which is a very vast area. Literally, the pictures that you are going to be seeing on this video are not exaggerated. That is how the Luano Valley looks like with tiny little villages around there, including the village of Kabwe, where the Maloney brothers had settled in hiding from the police as well as the army that was in search of them. So the Maloney brothers was Fabian, who was also known as Tunda. There was Mika as well as Stefano. So about 1984 or 1986, Chipikulu, which happens to be the Maloney brothers' father, fell ill. His ailment seemed to have developed some sort of wounds on his body that were sort of suspected to be cancerous wounds. As a result, he was airlifted to another area of Zambia, where he unfortunately died. Upon the death of their father, the family fell into abject poverty. The mother, Janet, had to take care of eight children all by herself. And the three Maloney brothers 
including the other three brothers, they tried their best to also help. As a result of that, they were illiterate. They literally could not read or write. Because they could not go to school, they had to go fend for themselves, including the family. So at the time of the Maloney brothers' death, Mika was 35 years old, Fabian Otunda was 31 years old, and Stefano was 27 years old. It is said that they were born around 1978 and 1986. The three Maloney brothers always dreamt of becoming successful entrepreneurs, and they did everything they could to reach that goal. Unfortunately, everything they tried to touch seem to be unreachable because of the situation being illiterate the maloney family was staunch catholic and the boys were altar boys when they were young somewhere somehow stefano as well as fabian decided to pull away from the catholic faith and they went to the seventh day adventist i think that's what it's called because they enjoyed singing as a result they were given an opportunity to join the church choir in 1997, Fabian had married a woman and had four children by the name of Eredina or Edna. Edna described Tunde or Fabian as a man who hated to be questioned. He was temperamental and if you asked him a question, he would beat her up. She said that whenever Tunde went to bed, he went to bed with an axe as well as a sword next to him. She further said that Fabian would leave the house at the middle of the night. She would not know where he goes to. And one day when she questioned him, he beat her to a pulp, almost killing her. Now and again, Fabian, who is also known as Tunde, will accuse his wife of being a Satanist. And as a result, he would look at her in the eye and said, Satan needs to be killed. And so she lived in fear, not knowing when will Fabian was going to kill her because he always accused her of being a Satanist. So after 10 years of marriage, Adina then decided it was enough. She went and divorced Fabian and then she moved away with her four children to make sure that she is safe from his danger. So on the 21st of May 2007, Fabiano and his two brothers, Mika and Stefano, decided to go to Edna's father's farm where he farmed bananas and they tried to steal the bananas. Unfortunately, Edna's father saw them and tried to confront them. That is when the brothers decided to kill him. Some reports say that they've been stealing from Edna's father for a while and so he was fed up of them stealing from him and he decided to go and report them to their mother. And that is when they got angry and decided to raid his house and then murder him. But I simply think that it's because of Edna divorcing Fabian and so they thought they needed to kill the father considering the fact that before you marry a woman, you would have to pay dowry. Here in South Africa, we call it Lobola. So they thought he could not pay back the Lobola and as a result, he had to die. Which is sick if you thought about it. The killing of Edna's father was the beginning of the murderous journey, which lasted almost seven years, between 2007 and 2013. So according to what I have read about Zambia, they never experienced heinous crimes like murder. Yes, there would be murder here and there, but it's not something they would always hear about on the news let alone hearing about serial killers. Therefore, the Mailoni brothers, they were the first serial killers Zambia has ever seen. So before the Mailoni brothers started killing people, the first thing that they started doing was to steal from people. They will steal livestock, they will steal grain, they will go into people's garden and raid the gardens and take whatever it is that they were planting on those farms to their home, to their mother, basically. I don't know what she said to them every time they brought food that they could not explain where they got it from. But nonetheless, this is what these boys did. If they saw you carrying something on your head, either you were coming from the market or you came to pick up a package from somewhere else, and they will tell you to drop the package down or your fate is death. 
Of course, the women that would carry things from the market would drop whatever it is they were carrying on their heads just so they spare their lives. Sometimes they would not even spare the life of the person they just robbed. They would murder them. The choice of weapons that they used in murdering their victims was an axe, bow and arrow, sword, as well as a machete. And in other instances would be a blunt object which they would bludgeon their victims with. So between the 10th of June and 15th of September 2009, the Maloney brothers had already killed five people. And one of the people that they had killed was their village chief advisor when they attempted to kill the chief first. However, the advisor had tried to stop the killing of the chief and as a result, he got killed. So the names of the five people they had murdered between June and September of 2009 were Christopher Nyama Chembe, advisor to the chief of Shimpepulu village, Mbalakawe Chimpepulu headman of Shitambani village, Watson Kashanga, Mr. Mwelwa Oroi, and the fifth person was an unknown man. And amongst the five people they had murdered is Edna's father, which happens to be Fabian's ex-wife's father. Watson Kashanga was found stabbed to death because he had attempted to mobilize the village in stopping the Mailoni brothers from causing any chaos in the village. When they found out about what he was doing, they went after him and they stabbed him to death with a sword. Villagers say that whenever the Maloney brothers drank alcoholic beverage, they would become unreasonably violent. They would beat up absolutely anything and everybody along their way, unprovoked by the way. They were basically bullies of the village and everybody was afraid of them. They did not care whether you were a middle-aged woman or an old man or a young man or even a little boy. To them, you were fair game. People of Luwano village said that Fabian seemed to always to be speaking to something or to someone that was invisible. He would also tell the villagers that he hears voices telling him that the village people want to bewitch him. Clearly, he had a case of schizophrenia. He was always paranoid about the villagers, always accusing them of being wizards and witches who want to who want to keep him from being rich. In most cases, Fabiano, he was detached from reality and he always was paranoid. Again, schizophrenia. Because he heard voices in his head telling him things that did not exist. Now, because Fabiano was headstrong, he seemed to be the leader of the two brothers. He was the one who was able to influence them about things that he heard. And he would say it was God that spoke to him. Everyone else in the village were unbelievers who needed to be dealt with. And the two brothers, Stefano and Mika, believed him that indeed the Fabian could talk to God when in fact he was suffering from schizophrenia clearly undiagnosed because they lived in a remote village in Zambia, in the central province. Fabiano's detachment from reality always played itself out whenever they went out to terrorize the community of Luano. So one day, one of the brothers suggested that they go to a diviner or a sangoma to get themselves strong, invincible, as well as be able to evade the police whenever the police started looking for them. And if the police did find and catch them, then the police must lose strength. If they do not lose strength, they must release them and also become friends with the police. So indeed, they packed up and went to a Sangoma somewhere in Zambia, who indeed did some rituals with them to make them strong, invincible, as well as untouchable by the authorities, and also give them muti for them to be rich, as they always wanted to be successful entrepreneurs. So from what I have read, apparently, the Mailoni brothers would get caught by the police, 
But whenever they were caught by the police, the police would just interrogate them, they would have a laugh with them, and then release them back to their community where they continued to terrorize them. Now, the people of Luano village then felt that indeed these guys were invincible and the police were being accused by the villagers of being friends with the Mailoni brothers. This led to many people in Luano village to flee the area fearing for their lives because they did not know when was their turn when the Mailoni brothers decide to kill again. So just imagine, for six years the Mailoni brothers managed to evade the police. They were just untouchable. This made the rumor of witchcraft even more widespread because it even spread across the entire Zambian population. People were like, there is no way that these three people are able to evade the police if they were not using Muti from a witch doctor. So after 12 people have been murdered by the Mailoni brothers, this is when the government of Zambia started to deploy more police to go find these three killers. Unfortunately, the police would fail. So much so that the government then decided to deploy the Zambian army into the Luano Valley. Again, look at this area. It is vast. It is filled with wild animals from cheetahs to crocodiles in the rivers as well as mountains and hills. It so happened that the Mailoni brothers knew this entire area and they knew exactly where to hide from authorities if the authorities tried to find them. This is why it took six years to find them and end the terror that they were causing to the people of Luano as well as Zambia. Because the people of Zambia were also scared that if the three brothers escaped or left the Luano Valley, they were going to go elsewhere and continue murdering people, probably even the capital city. So Zambians were not having it. They put pressure on the Zambian government to make sure that the Mailoni brothers were found dead or alive. So when the Mailoni brothers found out that the army was now involved, this is when they went into hiding. They went to a village called Kabwe and they hid in a big river, which is a tributary to the Zambezi River called Lusamfwe River. So as we know that the Zambezi River is famously known for its thunderous Victoria Falls, which cuts between Zambia and Zimbabwe. The Lusamfwe River harbored tiger fish as well as brim. So the Mailoni brothers, in order for them to survive, they needed to hide near this river and also start a new life around this river. So despite the army being in full force searching for the Mailoni brothers, they lived a life among the people of Kabwe. It's not that the people of Kabwe did not know that the Mailoni brothers were among them. They were just afraid to say anything because they knew of their reputation. So here is the Mailoni brothers killer trail. On the 26th of October, 2009, Matthews Masonda was found dead bludgeoned to death with a blunt object to the head. On the 8th of April 2010, Laksin Njinga was found dead, slaughtered like an animal with an axe. On the 4th of May 2010, a Zambian Flying Doctor Services Chief Pilot, Moses Masumba, was killed in his hospital plane with an axe, as well as a bow and arrow to the heart. On the 31st of May 2010, Atasai Washama was also killed by the brothers, throat slit with a knife. On the 12th of June 2010, Pensulu Mutalwa murdered, throat cut with an axe. On the 15th of June 2010, Blandini Asaki also bludgeoned and throat cut with an axe. And on the 21st of June 2010, Darius Chinika, a 43 year old man, who was my lonely brother's last victim. So this made a total of 12 victims that the Mailoni brothers had murdered for absolutely no good reason. Again, this left the Luano village or valley paralyzed with fear. 
many people left the village and they relocated elsewhere to save their lives. But the people of Zambia kept putting pressure on the government to find these three monsters before they caused more lives. So what confused me about this case is the fact that some of the texts that I read on the internet said as far as 2012, the Mailoni brothers still murdered people. But according to the list that I just read, the killing stopped in June 2010. So please, once again, people of Zambia, please do write in the comment section and let me know when exactly the Mailoni brothers stopped killing. So on the 24th of May 2011, the Zambian government deployed more army to make sure that the Mailoni brothers are found. And so the army, when they got to Kabwe, they divided themselves into four troops. And these four troops, they would take turns in finding the Mailoni brothers. Correction, the army was based in Chinwen to make sure that they are close enough to where the Mailoni brothers could be. However, when the army got there, they had underestimated the size of the Luano Valley. It is vast. It is filled with all kinds of obstacles that the army were not prepared for, let alone trained for. The army had to retrain themselves in finding a way to get to the Mailoni brothers because they could have been absolutely anywhere in the valley. So one of the army leaders, Copra Chapela, he came with an idea when he did scour the area, realizing that there is a river that is running through the valley. So Copra Chapela was like, what if the Mailoni brothers are situated along this river? Because the river has fish and they will survive through fishing. And indeed, they started scouring. And that is when they started scouring the Lesumfwe River upstream as well as downstream, making sure that anything that moved, they would investigate it and confirm whether it is or not the Mailoni brothers. The army also made sure that they told the villagers in Kabwe as well as along the Lusumfwe River and they should assist by reporting them to the army so they can capture them and save them as well as the people of Zambia. So for the next 54 days, they started searching for the Mailoni brothers. The rainy seasons did not help at all because the army were not familiar with the valley. It was vast and it made it very difficult for them to locate the Mailoni brothers. Even the army themselves admitted to the difficulty that they experienced in searching for the Mailoni brothers. Clearly, the Mailoni brothers, as the army described them, they were quite smart or intelligent. Because thus far, they have managed to evade the police and now they're evading the army. So six years of terror, 12 bodies, and 50 million kwacha in reward for anybody that captures the Mailoni brothers. Finally, the army of Zambia now have an idea where the Mailoni brothers are located. So this is how the Mailoni brothers were found. It turns out that two villagers were trying to fish tiger fish in upstream because they realized that they had come a little bit too late. Maybe the fish had migrated upstream. As they were walking along a stream that goes into the Lusumfwe River or the tributary to the Lusumfwe River, they noticed two men walking by. But before they saw the two men, they had seen two pairs of fresh footprints. And that is when they looked at each other and thought, what if these footprints belong to the Mailoni brothers? Of course, that brought fear and shivers down their spine. However, because they wanted the 50 million kwacha as well, they decided to carefully go and investigate and confirm that indeed these were the Mailoni brothers. When they got close and they realized that indeed these were the Mainoni brothers, they went back to the army and reported the whereabouts of the Mainoni brothers. The army promptly went to the area and indeed the first thing that the army did was to check and confirm if these were the Mainoni brothers. 
and it was confirmed that they were Mailoni brothers. The Mailoni brothers had created a campsite in Kabwe and they made sure that every time they lit up fire, that the firewood would not create smoke, basically giving off their location to anybody that was searching for them. Clearly, they were quite smart. So the Zambian army approached the campsite and they opened fire hitting two of the Mailoni brothers, that is Mika and Stefano, who came out wounded and basically collapsed right in front of the army. When Fabian realized that they have been shot at, he came out with a machete and tried to charge at the army and then they opened fire. So as Fabian fell to his death, his last words were, how could you? You have sold us out referring to the villagers who pointed their campsite to the army. And I'm wondering, what was the villagers supposed to do? Live with a the snake they don't know when it was going to attack? Finally, the terror was over and the news spread in Luano village and the valley as well as the rest of Zambia. Zambia breathed a sigh of relief. It was now over. They can now go back to their lives. The Mailoni brothers' bodies were flown to Kabwe Mortuary, where it was displayed to anybody and anyone that wanted to confirm that indeed the Mailoni brothers were dead. The governor as well as chiefs went and made sure that indeed it was the Mailoni brothers, including the chief that they almost murdered. The Mailoni brothers' mother was indifferent about their death. She did not care. Oh, she was afraid that people were going to turn against her if she said anything or showed any kind of emotions towards the death of her children. I think that's exactly what people were looking for. To give them an excuse to evict them out of Luano village. Then the debate started about the burial of the Mailoni brothers. The people of Zambia were like, there is no way that the government is going to spend their tax money in burying three monsters. They said, rather burn their bodies and feed them to the infested crocodile river, Lunsimfua River, or the Zambezi River for that matter. But the Mailoni brothers were buried in undisclosed area in Zambia. Even their own mother doesn't know where exactly they are buried. The government kept promising her that they were going to take her to her son's graves. But to this very day, she doesn't know where they are buried. Furthermore, the Zambian government begged the people of Zambia to accept Janet and the remaining family members that they were innocent people in all of this. Please let them stay in Luano Valley because they had nothing to do with the 12 people that her sons had murdered. So the people accepted that. They did not give the Mailoni family any trouble. However, trouble did come knocking at their door when a cowboy attorney together with his wife decided to build Janet a brand new house. The people of Zambia as a whole, they were in disbelief and angry at this lawyer who decided to build a house of the woman who gave birth to three monsters People did not understand why that happened, but of course, there was nothing that they could have done. Janet was living in abject poverty. I'm assuming that the lawyer felt so bad for Janet because when they got there, they don't even have food to eat. So that is why probably he decided to build them a brand new house. So that is it guys with the Mailoni brothers. This case for me was quite interesting, upsetting, as well as confusing to say the least, but I tried my level best to make as much sense and also stick to what could have been the real truth to this story, considering the fact that it is all over the place. To my Zambian viewers, please do correct me where I may have gone wrong or omitted something. I'm more than open-minded for your correction in the comment section. I thank you in advance. 
So if you like this video, give it a thumbs up, do subscribe to my YouTube channel and don't forget to click the bell notification so that you get notified every time I upload a new true crime story. Do leave me a comment down below and let me know what you think and also help me by sharing this video far and wide. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time with a new true crime video. Goodbye.